Hey guys, today I'm going to talk a little bit about the physicality of scare acting. So this sort of follows on from my video about my time as a Hello Scream actor and the role that I played and all that. So that was a long video. Um, no, today I wanted to talk more about the physical aspects. So if you've ever thought of doing scare acting or are just curious, how physical is it? It's, it's pretty physical. I got a lot of exercise. So, um, actually I think, I don't know if I talked about this in the audition video, like I did a video about when I auditioned for this, um, but that is basically where all the exercise started for me. So um, one of the things that we did was like pretending to be an animal and I chose a really physically demanding animal in the lizard because like, you know, your, your limbs are out this way and it's just not natural and if you're not used to it, oh my god, I was sore for a few days after that. Um, and then there was a lot of like running at people and, um, you know, stopping before you touch them kind of thing and all that kind of stuff. So the audition itself was pretty physically challenging in that sense. Um, and then what after that, then rehearsals. Um, now rehearsals were kind of similar to the audition, like we did some similar things. We didn't do the lizard thing again, like, you know, pretend you're being an animal. We did do the running at each other and learning to stop um, because, you know, if you're... If you're scare acting, a lot of the time you might be jumping out at someone and you're not allowed to touch them, so you need to know how to do that, get as close as possible, and stop before you overdo it, um, before you touch anyone. Um, try not to collide with anyone. I mean, obviously, every now and then something doesn't quite go right because, you know, it's live action, you're like right in front of people and someone might do a sudden movement that you're not ready for. Most people jump away, but hey! Um, yeah, there were there was one time where like all I was doing was reaching out. This is when I'm in the bathroom and I'm like pretending to be dead. Oh, sorry, sorry, tripod. And I'm just like reaching out, going ah. And I had one guy just sort of like he wasn't expecting me to be there or something, so he whacked my hand down, which you're not supposed to do. But I think that was just like a a reflex because you know some people freak out and they don't know what to do and they just have that automatic thing. And he said sorry straight away. So um, yeah, I didn't I didn't like you know if it gets bad you can report people but I was like no that's fine don't worry about it but yeah um, sometimes things happen but we, we trained a lot to try and make sure we didn't do that we also did a whole bunch of other like physical kinds of exercises the vampire game was a bit odd though where like you know you you like this and you're trying to find other people just on sound um, which like we, we were never completely blind or anything some of the rooms are a bit dark but I guess it kind of helps if you're you know doing your listening but yeah no a lot of running um ah oh, there was that one where we we were all like um in a line in teams and then you would have to dodge between people without touching anyone so i'd tie my hair up because touching with the hair counted in that game so i'd tie my hair up and we're like going between people really really fast and then running to the back and then you have to dodge back up to your spot oh my god it was like you know in high school pe classes or like primary school even and you're doing all those kinds of games and i'm like i am old now but i will do my best um, yeah, so there was a lot of, like, physical exercise type stuff, and it was all related to, um, the whole scare acting thing. Um, so, I feel like I got fit just from, just from all that. And then once you're actually acting as well, I mean, it depends a bit on where you are, um, but the, some of the, some of the different scare roles were actually quite full on. Um, so for me, out of the four roles I played, the host was not so bad because I'm mostly just standing there walking around. Um, the wall was not too bad. I mean, I'm pushing through the thing and you've got to push, you can push quite far and then you're like lifting the, the drop box. It was kind of heavy. Um, and then you have to let it go or like if the latch, the latch is there, but you still have to push it up at the end. Um, so there's a lot of like push-ups, push-ups in like a sort of odd way. Um, Hanako-san, that one wasn't too bad. It depended a bit which, which thing I was doing when I was jumping out or whatever. But the one that was most physically demanding for me, um, was Kuchisake Ono, where I'm jumping out, dodging and doing a lot of fast stuff, chasing people around this mirror room. Um, so yeah. <laughs> and, um, by the end of that, uh, because my my costume wasn't really a breathable fabric, I would be so sweaty and gross. And it was just fortunate that that was the last one I had to do before I went on break. So then I go on break, and they had dinner for us. Thank God, so I didn't have to worry about that. I just joined the queue, give them my token, um, get myself a free Coca Cola, and then go sit down and um, all that. And then after that, because I'd been doing so much physical stuff, my kimono by then was pretty out of shape. So I'd have to go upstairs, go to the mirror, and like put it back together again. Um, that was one of the difficult things about doing physical stuff in a kimono. That and the Michael Jackson dance. 
Um, yeah, no, learning the Michael Jackson dance as well, Thriller. Um, because like I haven't done much dancing in a long time and so I would practice that over and over and over and I got pretty tired doing that as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, oh, the bloody kimono, trying to do Michael Jackson. And like after each thing, a lot of the time I would find places to hide or there'd be a period of time where I knew no one was going to come through whatever area I was in. So I was constantly adjusting this kimono under my obi and with my other belt underneath and just trying to get it back into shape. Um, that, that was, that was kind of tricky and a little bit annoying so I'm constantly like shuffling. But um, yeah, no, after Thriller was the hardest because I'd just done Thriller and then I, when I was roaming, um, you know, trying to scare people. I couldn't really, like, I wasn't allowed to break character, so I just have, like, my, my top sort of, you know, opening up and showing my, my little um, singlet underneath. It was a black singlet, though, so it blended in, but yeah. <laughs> the physicality of that, I feel like I did get fitter. I, I probably lost it a bit now because I've been sitting on my bum again, but um, scare acting, and this wasn't even, this is like just over two weeks of rehearsals and the actual show. If you're in America where these things go on for months, oh my god, you would get so fit compared to, especially compared to me, like, wow. So that, that was a really good thing. Um, <clears throat> oh yeah, with the kimono, I forgot to mention this last video. With kimono, the way we put them on, so usually you're supposed to do um, left over right, because um, if you don't, like, that's, that's not good. That's only how dead people, like, if you, if you do it the wrong way around, that's how dead people are buried. And I said to my creative director, look, here's what I know about kimono. Since we're dead, can we do right over left? So we wore our kimono like dead people, me and the host, and I, I got her set up and all that, so we're both dead girls. Anyway, that's just a side tangent about kimono. Um, yeah, we were intentionally dead, so if anyone, I don't think anyone noticed, I don't think even the Japanese people coming through noticed, because it was kind of dark and they're freaking out about everything else to notice such a subtle feature. But with Halo Scream, we did try and put in a lot of details like that, so there's a lot that goes into it, like there's all these tiny things that are, I think in, in one maze they even had like scent, um, scent capsules or something, so I think especially at the beginning the bathroom in the Ward 13 would have smelled really bad. People were, some of the actors were like, yeah, I'm in this one and it smells really bad. So that's, yeah, no, there's all these little subtle details here. Anyway, I'm off topic! So, um, with the physicality, so the exercise, yes, I got a lot of exercise and I've been trying to keep it up, but you know, I'm, I'm lazy and I've been tired. I was so tired after Halo Scream because like you're doing this, um, you know, you go in for makeup and then it finishes at, at midnight and so you've been there for I don't know how long and then you're going home and then you're trying to calm down after you've been in character for ages and like, you know, cleaned up all your makeup and then you're just trying to settle down to bed and then you go, oh, and then you wake up late and then the next day you're doing it all over again. And so for a few days after that, I was just tired and I think, um, after the first weekend, maybe some of my muscles were a bit sore, but after the second weekend, um, no, I was well and truly into it, but I was pretty tired and worn out. Um, so I've probably recovered now, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> I also physically, apart from exercise, I got a lot of battle scars, and most of the battle scars happened on the first two nights while I was still sort of working out what I wanted to do. So I can show you some pictures of that. Yeah, so the bruises were mainly from when I was doing Hanako-san because especially at the beginning I was mostly hiding in the fourth bathroom stall next to the third one which is closed. So what I do is I would jump out from the fourth one, sort of like rah, and I would get this hand and sort of go against the bathroom stall. But what happens is like, I mean even then, just doing it on something flat here, I bumped my elbow. Um, and when you're coming out from the bathroom stall, quite often I would bump my sh shoulder right here against the corner of the other bathroom stall and then I was just like constantly like messing up how I was hitting things. So most of my bruises were on this side from coming out like that and going raw. Um, <laughs> And, you know, slapping things. I The second weekend, I tried not to slap so much stuff because I could see my hand, like, the veins were all like, ah, what are you doing? And I'd have, like, yeah, no. It was, when you're scare acting, you need to pace yourself on some of that kind of stuff. Um, the other battle scar, I still have. I still have a little bit of a scratch here. Um, I don't know how well you can see it in this lighting. And, you know, I picked off a lot of the scab and it's slowly healing. I got that from the Dropbox, um, I think on the second weekend when um, I didn't time it very well and I came out of the thing and I just sort of scraped along the side of the Dropbox and so it was um, 
not really bleeding, uh, but yeah, no, I could tell in the dark that it was painful, so I was like, just in case it's bleeding, I'll, I'll do this and like, you know, um, but no, it was fine, it was just like, I got a bit of a red scratch there for a while, and it, that one's still healing, two, two, it's a bit over two weeks later, um, so yeah, that one I just needed to judge better, but sometimes when you get into the adrenaline of it, you just do stuff and you're like, oops, maybe I shouldn't have done that! Um, and then the last physicality thing, and speaking of adrenaline, is, um, the vocal challenge. So, um, yeah, one of my, one of my fellow actors, I think, figured this out, because she's, she's got, um, you know, full-on music theatre training, and, like, will sing for hours and hours on stage and be completely fine, but she says every time she does Hallow Scream, her voice sort of struggles and she starts losing it. And um, she thinks it's because of the fog machine. So I went away and had a look at that. And yeah, fog machines, not all fog machines. I think there are some that are less stressful on your voice. But obviously you're breathing this stuff in for five hours that you're in the maze. And um, yeah, after a while it can sort of um, mess up your respiratory system a little bit. And then that, that then affects your voice and all that. Throw in a bit of adrenaline when you're overdoing some of the vocal stuff. And it can be really tough. So um, yeah. I think I probably came out of it better than other people because for the most part I'm doing false chord growling which uses your vestibular folds rather than your actual vocal cords. Um, but I did have some speaking lines and then when I was doing Maiden of Matsue screaming in the girly voice, girly high pitch voice, sometimes I, I think sometimes I overdid that because that's not something I usually do with my voice and that was using my clean voice. Um, so I started toning back that, that down, um, you know, once I realized that that might be an issue. But most of the time, I was a bit worried about my false chord screaming, because sometimes, like, I usually do deep growls, low growls, like, Roar! um, but I was doing higher ones. I don't know if I can do it now, because, like, I'm not in the atmosphere, but when you're in the dark atmosphere and people are coming, I was doing more of a high one, I think, so, like, <laughs> kind of thing which is not normal for me and kind of like it's vibrating different parts and um, like I can feel it even there. Doesn't feel like, uh, I don't feel like I use my voice but I can feel like something in here that's vibrated differently and maybe there is a bit of my vocal cords coming into it. And so um, yeah, when you've got adrenaline and you're in the atmosphere and you overdo it, I was a little bit worried about that. But on, on the second weekend, I think I paced myself a little bit better and just was paying more attention. And sometimes I do more of a hissing sound. Um, can I do it now without spitting on everything? And this is coming off a little bit. But like, you know, <laughs> kinds of kinds of sound, which is a little bit hard to hear because it's a noisy environment. Doing a false chord growl with like, um, it's easier to project that into the room and for people to hear it and actually freak out because you're a small female making this noise and most people don't expect that still. So, um, yeah, uh, but it's just like, you know, sort of working out where I, where I was with my voice and between things, if I knew no one was around, I would do quick vocal checks just going, oh, and if I can get that high note, usually I know my voice is doing pretty okay. Sometimes I can get that high note and my speaking voice will be a bit off, so I just sort of like check. And um, I sort of used that as a guideline for myself to figure out whether or not I was overdoing it, whether I should like tone it back for a bit. Um, but yeah, no, uh, so every Sunday after we'd done like the Saturday, Saturday was the last one in a set, um, on the Sundays I would have a full vocal rest day and just not say anything or try not to. Sometimes Mikey got me to, you know, like Mikey's my disabled brother every now and then he'll yell out and, you know, over the years we've sort of just conditioned ourselves to respond the same way, like mirror him. And so he got me a couple of times, but not too bad. Um, so I had some vocal rest days, which I don't do that often because I don't need that often because I'm at home most of the time being quiet anyway. Um, but yeah, trying to look after myself that way. But I think overall I did better because I know like, um, what last week one of the guys was saying he feels like his voice only just recovered and that's like a good week after um, that, whereas I was fine like after a couple of days. After the vocal rest, like I don't know if it's because I actually needed the regeneration or if it's just that like after a day of not saying anything my voice was like, I don't know how to work anymore. But um, usually the day after vocal rest I was a bit like, I'm not sure about this. But then after that, I'd be fine, get to start talking again, and it'd be fine. Um, yeah, just trying to manage that was interesting. But 
you know, I'm glad I know false chord growlings. I know some of the guys would have been trying to be scary using their voice by going loud rather than using different techniques. Um, although I do know like some of the guys were using voice with distortion quite well, I thought. You know, that's where you're like, um, you add a bit of distortion onto your voice. So if you're just doing like a la kind of thing and you're vibrating stuff in your mouth rather than trying to go loud. I don't even know how you would do that loud if you just get ah. I don't know how to do, how to just get louder and louder until you break your voice. I guess because I've just been doing it for so long, I just naturally add that grit with the anatomy. But anyway, so that's a physical challenge is your voice. Um, now I've seen some scare acting videos out there where they like take all these lozenges and so on. You gotta be careful with that stuff because it's not really how it works. When you take a lozenge, it's not actually soothing your vocal cords. It, it goes down your esophagus, your food tube, not your windpipe. So, um, yeah, it's not really helping. And then if you get one of those numbing ones, um, sometimes that can mess up your perception of like what, whether or not you are doing damage. Um, yeah, just cause like you think, oh, my throat's numb. I can do any kind of sound, but then you overdo it and make things worse. So yeah, the best thing to do is more just to be quiet where you can. So like what I did in the Hanako-san bathroom is originally I was jumping out going rah, rah, rah. But um, later on, I started like pretending to be dead against the wall, and then I would do, it. and then occasionally I would start screaming if if they if I felt like they needed it or would benefit from the scare. But a lot of the time, I just sort of chased it because they I know they just came from Kuchisake before Hanako-san, um, and that is a pretty intense scare. So I was like, I don't need to be over the top, and you sort of manage things that way. So I would just sort of like pretend I'm dying trying to chase them, no, come back kind of thing. I was silent in that one. I would just, but you know, pretend I'm reaching out for help and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, there are ways to manage it. And if you need to alter a scare a little bit because your voice needs a break, sometimes you just find a different way to do it. And it, sometimes when you're quiet, it freaks people out more. Like when I was playing the host, when people are coming into that first room, I would just sort of stand there with my hair all like that. And all I would do is watch them coming in. And then if they don't take the hint to stop before the curtain, because um, some of them were about to go through the curtain, I just sort of walk, put my heart, arm in front of them, get them to stop. Um, and sometimes when I started moving was when they would freak out and I hadn't said a word. And then there was the times where they just saw me and while I was standing still and they thought I was a statue and they were scared of a statue. It's like, oh, okay. So sometimes, like, especially because people are in the mood to be scared, um, you don't always have to go rah. Um, and you can manage that a little bit. And you know, there are some people also who just like can't be scared because they're, I don't know, trying to play the tough guy thing. It's usually guys who are trying to be tough guys, occasionally girls, but not so much. Um, and in that case, like nothing you do is gonna scare them. So if you see those types, you know, you could just like act creepy, let them go through and then get the person behind them who's gonna be scared, you know? Um, so there's different ways to manage physicality, but those I think were the main things is like, Exercise, you need to be reasonably fit or have endurance. I think I got through the original stuff just through endurance um, because if I want to do something, I will. But um, it helps if you're fit and I definitely got a bit fitter at the end of it. Um, be careful of the battle scars. So like you got to be aware of your environment and try not to overdo stuff. Um, you've also got to like watch out because they're sets and if something comes loose in a set, you need to pay attention to that. But I don't think we had too many of those kinds of incidents. Um, had a few lights go out, but that just added to the mood, to be honest. Um, yeah, no, overall, I think that was fine. But it was more just me overdoing stuff, whacking myself against things, scraping myself against things. Um, try not to do that. And then with your voice, just like you, you want to learn good vocal techniques. So at least if you do regular singing or like if you're an actor, like doing vo vocal work with projection and whatever. And... Um, yeah, or if you're going to be screaming, you want to learn a proper way to scream. I definitely recommend if you're doing scare acting, probably false chord is better because it, it's usually louder. Um, a lot of people struggle with volume with fry screaming. Fry screaming, most fry screaming tends to rely on you having a microphone and you don't have that in a scare acting environment. So I would learn false chord screaming. Um, Lindsay Ray has a good tutorial. Um, like basics. And then I also did the Angela Gosso pretend to be a big dog. We just like, woof. Um, and that's how I learned that. Um, but yeah, no, that, that's definitely the style rather than 
fry screaming. But if you're amazing at fry screaming and you have the technique that makes it louder, like go for it. But just if you're new, I would recommend false chord. Anyway, so those I think were the three main physical challenges. I also did get some cramps sometimes um, in my leg just from just from being active, I think. Um, and you know, sometimes I'd be standing, oh my God, I got a massive cramp in my leg when I was doing the host welcoming people and I've got lines I've got to say, and like, you know, trying to say things like, I'm supposed to be in charge of the space, powerful and whatever. And meanwhile, I have this cramp. And I think that is probably the most impressive acting I did the whole time was pretending I didn't have a cramp in my leg. Oh my God, that was difficult, but I made it through. And then I just sort of like got on the Barocca. I think like, you know, I had low, something i don't know but getting on the baraka kind of helped um and then just you know stretching out a bit more and whatever but yeah so those are the main physical challenges for me personally scare acting i'm sure other people have other things that were difficult for them but um yeah did i have anything more to say i don't know i wore contacts the entire time obviously if i'm having makeup i don't want to wear glasses and if i'm jumping around and being active and getting sweaty um i've been on stage once with glasses when I was trying to play violin in a situation with my old violin where I couldn't hear it because they were terrified of feedback. And I had my, and so I was relying on um, having my violin tuned well and then having stickers so I could actually make sure I was getting exactly the right notes because some of them were a bit difficult. You're supposed to use your ears for violin, but if you can't hear it, what do you do? Stickers. And um, yeah, having my glasses slip down until I couldn't see the stickers. That, that was not fun. So anytime you're gonna get sweaty and you need to see things, Contact lenses. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, was that everything? Probably, I don't know. I had a great time, even though like the physical stuff was difficult, but it was, um, it felt good, you know? Like, I don't like going to the gym, for example, or going for a run. Those things are boring. And because they're boring, you're very aware of how, you know, you're getting sweaty and gross and tired. But um, scare acting, because it was fun, I didn't really notice so much. Like, yes, I felt some discomfort, but it didn't bother me that much. I was like, I am here to do a job. I am here to freak people out. And so I was able to push through it. And it's just a shame that I can't find so many ways to exercise like that. So, hey, but um, yeah, no, I had fun. Anyway, I think that's all for this video. If you haven't seen it already, you can watch my video about my Hello Scream role. I was in the York Eye maze. Um, yeah, wearing that black kimono. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I had a great time playing all the different roles. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And of course I would end up in Yorkai because I'm half Japanese. I think I was the only Japanese person and only Japanese actor. We had a real variety of people. So like, you know, I mean, they did choose some of the more Asian looking people for some of the Yorkai roles, but then they also had like everyone mixed in. So, um, yeah, they're not, they weren't too like, um, what would you call it? They weren't heaps strict on that and I think it was really good to have a good mix because like once you have makeup on and once you're in the dark, who really cares if you're actually Japanese or not as long as you're good at acting the role and I, I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of good people. Um, but yeah, no, actually ha being Japanese did help me a bit because like I can pronounce Japanese and I could get my mum. We did the voice acting stuff. I think that's why, I mean, I can speak Japanese once I know what to say and I also have recording gear. So I think that's why mum and I got to record the stuff for the bathroom bit, like on the speakers, making the atmosphere. Ah, it was so cool. It really added to the atmosphere, but I'm, I'm off topic. Anyway, I had a lot of fun and it was, I'm so happy they had something Japanese there. Like, um... I don't want people to be scared of playing with different culture and like letting us explore different culture because I got to do something really fun and use like some of my um, experiences and like, you know, actually use my Japanese stuff for something. That was really cool. I had a lot of fun with it and, you know, making me um, refresh on a lot of like old Japanese myths and refresh how to put on a kimono because I haven't really worn kimono that much like when I was really little yeah um, and then what there was that time I got made up like geisha in Kyoto when I was a teenager um, yeah no I had a lot of fun with that because like I don't think I've ever put on a kimono by myself until this one so yeah, but no, that's way off topic. I was talking about like physical aspects and of course I just like, hey, here's an idea, here's a thing I haven't said yet. Anyway, um, oh yeah, in case you haven't watched um, the last video, the story about this, <laughs> I'm not being a deck or a girl, it's, it's my little pugs. A friend gave these 
funky band-aids to me a long time ago. But well, the story of that, I'm actually concealing the fact that I have a really terrible slow grinding pimple underneath it. Um, it's, it's really sore and it's one of those ones you can't really do anything about. You just have to wait for it to go because, and I don't like wearing makeup if I don't have to. I never wear, like, if I do wear makeup, it's um, black eyeliner and then I put eyeshadow to conceal the fact that I suck at it. Um, or I would wear makeup if it's for like an acting thing. So um, that was that was cool. We had slightly different makeup every day. I had two different makeup artists because one of them switched halfway through. And um, the one day I had blood as well, except that it sticks to your hair and the whole time my hair's like this. So I'm like, yeah, maybe don't do blood today because, you know, not hardly anyone's gonna see it until I'm like, you know, coming out at you and then it sort of goes whoosh. Um, Anyway, so, um, yeah, I, I, I'm aware of the existence of things like foundation, but I don't own any. And I was just like, well, I've got this horrible little red pimple here. And if I make a video blog, people are going to be staring at it. So let's give them something a little bit more pleasant to stare at and a little bit more fun and a little bit more weird and me. <laughs> so I hope you like my nose band-aid instead of me showing off my horrible pimple but I can feel that it's already falling off and I suppose I should go and have lunch and stop rambling and rambling and rambling. But I like rambling. I just, I can't help myself. Anyway, I'll see you on the next one. Oh yeah, if you have like questions about scare acting or Hello Scream or whatever, please leave them in the comments because like I feel like there was more stuff I was going to talk about but I can't remember right now and you know, I should really write a list of this stuff before I forget because you know, as time goes on, the memories will fade. So while everything's fresh in my mind, if there's something you wanted to know about Hello Scream or scare acting, ask it to me and I will hopefully get to it. Um, but yeah, no, now I've got to remember what all the other videos were that I wanted to make. And I really need to edit, oh my god, the free space video I filmed ages ago. I should edit that. And then I should start filming them again. And, um, yeah, because I'm also trying to get a new computer. And, like, you know, should I keep playing it on the old computer? Will it even work on the new computer? It was hard enough to get it to work on my Windows 7 machine. Will it work on Windows 10? I don't know. Um, yeah, no. I will, I will get onto that. Oh my god, here's me rambling again about what videos I'm going to make. But, um... For now, lunch.